Well, hello. Today's lesson is on inverse equations, and more specifically, writing inverse equations for functions. All right. Before we get started on the exact procedures, let's look at a couple of things about functions. The first one says a function takes an input, which we usually call x, and it returns an output, which we usually call y. So that's our independent, dependent, or input-output. But the inverse of a function actually undoes that. It works it in reverse. So instead of taking an x in and getting a y out, we're going to think of it as the inverse function is one that takes the output, the y, and then returns the input. So it takes the y, puts it in, and retrieves the x. Okay, um, That's just some basic information, not too awful important. Um, the uh, There are some steps for writing an inverse equation, and these you'll need to write down in your notes. Um, there's four steps. The first step um, is replace the variable f of x with y. Replace f of x with the variable y. The second one is switch the places of the x and the y. The third one is to solve the new equation for y. And then replace that y that's in there with f to the negative first of x. That negative first means it's the inverse. So that's the inverse of f of x. Um, go ahead and pause the video for just a second and write all those down and we'll get started. Um, on an example. Okay, now that you've written all that down, let's go ahead and work an example. All we're going to do is follow these steps, and that's basically what we're doing in today's lesson, okay? So the first one says, write the equation for the inverse of the function f of x equals 7x minus 4. Alright, so let's follow the first step says to replace, replace the variable f of x with y. So I'm just going to put a y in here. All right, the second step says to switch the places of x and y. So now I'm going to write, instead of y, I'm going to put an x equals 7y minus 4. So that's the second step. The third step says to solve that equation for y. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get that, start getting that y by itself. And that gives me x plus 4 equals 7y. The last step is to divide by 7. Divide by 7. So that gives us, as our equation, y equals x plus 4, that quantity divided by 7. Now the last step says to replace the y with this inverse statement. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to write f to the negative 1, which just means the inverse of x, equals x plus 4 over 7. And that's our answer. Pretty simple, wasn't it? All right, let's look at another example. I'm just going to work a couple more examples and then turn you loose on your work. Right, this one says to write the equation for the inverse of the function f of x equals negative two-thirds x plus one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the f of x with y. So I'm going to have y equals negative two-thirds x plus one. Then I'm going to switch the places of x and y. So get x equals negative two-thirds y plus 1. Simple as that. Now solve the new equation for y. All right, when I solve the new equation for y, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, subtract 1 from both sides, and get x minus 1 equals negative 2 thirds times y. And now I'm going to have to remove this fraction. I'm going to have to remove this fraction, negative two-thirds. So there's a nice little uh, way of doing this, a nice easy way of doing this. What we're going to do is to remove that fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. If you remember, the reciprocal just means it's flipped. Okay, So the reciprocal of negative two-thirds 
mean I'm going to multiply this side by negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to multiply this side by negative 3 over 2. I'm going to multiply this whole side by that. And what happens is this and this cancel out and make 1. So I'm left with y equals, and I'm going to distribute this negative 3 over 2 to the x and to the negative 1. So I get negative 3 over 2 times x, and then negative 3 over 2 times negative 1 is going to be positive 3 over 2. Last step is to replace the y with our inverse statement, so it would be f of f to the negative 1 of x equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 3 over 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our solution, or, our, or actually our inverse function, the inverse of f of x equals negative 2 thirds x. Now one thing I can do, we're not really doing, going to do in this lesson, but one thing I could do is I could graph my function on a graph, use the y-intercept and the slope, then I could graph my inverse function, use the y-intercept and the slope, and graph those, and if you remember from yesterday, they're going to be um, reflected over the line y equals x. So that's just a quick review from what we did yesterday, okay? All right, got one more example to go for you. All right, so let's do this one. We want to write the equation for the inverse of this function. So I'm going to set it back up as y equals negative 3x minus 1 over 2 and make it f of, I'm sorry, let's undo that. Make it x equals negative 3y minus 1 over 2. That should be a minus there. Now I want to solve the new equation for y. Well, since both sides, so since it's divided by 2, the way I get rid of this division by 2 is I multiply this whole side by 2. And those will cancel, so I have to multiply this side by 2 also. So I have 2x equals negative 3y minus 1. So I'll add 1 to both sides and get 2x plus 1 equals negative 3y. Last step, divide both sides by negative 3. And I have y equals 2x plus 1 over negative 3. Last step is we're going to change the y to that inverse statement, so make it f to the negative 1 of x, which just means the inverse of x equals 2x plus 1 over 3. Now, if we wanted you to write this split up, remember you could split it up by putting those as a fraction and those as a fraction. So you could write this as, I'm going to write up here at the top because I'm running out of room. You might see it either way. 2 thirds x, because I divided both by 2, and then plus the 1 third. And actually those were negative, aren't they? So I have to make those negative. Negative 2 thirds x, and negative 1 third. All right. Now let's try this one on your own. You're going to record your answers on the WSQ. Um, that's going to ask you for the slope, and it's going to ask you for the y-intercept. Good luck. And uh, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye. Like the hat, don't you?